¿no? Hello everyone, uh, greetings. Uh, thank you for watching us on the Climate TV channel. Uh, I'm Faisal from Pakistan and uh, working as regional coordinator, subcontinent region for the Global Youth Energy Outlook. Also, I'm working as a youth minister for energy. Uh, and uh, today uh, I'll be thank you for watching this event with our guest, uh, Andrea Belcazar Gonzalez from Mexico. Hello, Andrea, welcome. Thank you, Zayed. How are you? Fine, thank you so much. Well, uh, I'll be putting some questions to Andrea about uh, energy and climate. Uh, but uh, before uh, that, I would like to briefly introduce her to our audience. Uh, well, Andrea uh, is currently studying uh, sustainable development engineering and uh, she worked as director of social responsibility for the student energy chapter at uh, University de Monterrey, Mexico. Uh, uh, also, she served the chapter as president. Uh, during her leadership, uh, the chapter won uh, four institutional prizes, uh, which includes uh, social impact, entitlement, uh, great, uh, greater positive environmental impact, and uh, one for hosting the first virtual student energy regional meetup. Uh, recently, uh, Andrea is the winner of the award uh, Mojo Tech 2021 in the category of environmental sustainability. And a few weeks ago, she got appointed as a member board of directors at Student Energy. Uh, Andrea uh, was started as a sustainable development engineer of the month, uh, where she uh, was also awarded with leadership uh, in student activities award. Talking about her major interests uh, in the energy sector includes uh, corporative energy uh, generation and efficiency, uh, electric mobility and infrastructure, uh, industrial logistics, sustainable communities, and uh, energy regulation system. Uh, well, uh, uh, now uh, I will give the floor to Andrea by uh, posing uh, the very first question to her. Um, Andrea, uh, how uh, the current global energy system is uh, contributing to the climate crisis? Uh, and in your opinion, uh, what would be the effective policy response to, uh, to tackle the issue of climate change? Well, first and anything, thank you for having me here today and for the introduction. Um, answering the question, well, according to the United Nations, and this is something that most of people in the energy sector know, um, the energy is the main factor that contributes to climate change and represents about the 60% of the greenhouse gas emissions. Um, in addition to these, around 13% um, the energy percent of the global population does not have access to modern electricity services. And uh, this uh, being the energy sector also part of poverty and other um, problems that we face worldwide. Um, to be able to fight climate change, we need to work in order to achieve the 17 SDGs the UN has. They are all related to each other in some ways. And um, I believe that if we work in all of them, we can achieve them, but as um, together one with each other. Um, I believe that first energy poverty must be solved. It's a huge problem because due to this, uh, people do not have access to information, to education, to internet, to all this information that we have. And that's why we know about climate change and we're working to solve climate change. But uh, in order to be able to reach this in a global way, uh, people all around the world need to be able to have access to this. We also need to work to change the current energy production systems and have more renewable resources um, and being part of the production. For this to be a better energy system, we need to have a better infrastructure. That's a really uh, big issue, also especially in rural uh, areas. And um, one of uh, it should be one that allows an energy mix production between different uh, sources, not just fossil fuels, not just 100% renewable sources, because we have economies that depend on petroleum and fossil fuels. So we need to have like this mix and um, an international cooperation to achieve these SDGs and these problems we're having. Well, uh, that's a perfect answer. And uh, it's true that uh the uh, uh, energy system is directly linked uh, with the uh, climate and environments. And uh, uh, 
Uh, also, according to researches, uh, it is the current energy system that is responsible for uh, more than 70% of direct emissions to the environment and uh, is responsible for uh, annual death rate of 7 million uh, globally. So uh, there is a serious need uh, to recover with the sustainable and secure uh, energy uh, technologies uh, specifically uh, because there are you know, different opportunities uh, of different countries. Some countries have uh, you know, more access to uh, uh, hydropower, some have uh, more uh, to solar and wind. So yeah. uh, the, the current leaders need to, uh, to focus the investments toward the uh, safer, cleaner, and uh, sustainable uh, energy technologies. Yeah, and totally. This is, this is a and big I opportunity to recover better with the sustainable and clean energy technologies from the COVID pandemic. Yeah, that's true. And um, it's really important like to work on that way. You just mentioned some, some countries have a better potential in hydroelectric, some in solar. And uh, I think that's, that's like why we need international cooperation. So countries do like agree on something that if a country totally needs to be depending on fossil fuels and doesn't have another way to be able to generate, like leaving them that um, that generation, but by the others that have potential in other kinds of, of energy production systems to be able to implement those, like uh, they need to like um, have a settlement between them on on what's going to work with each other. Yes, of course, that's true. And uh, energy mix is also an important thing uh, in the energy system. So uh, also my second question uh, goes toward the energy mix uh, that I would like to ask that what is the current energy mix for power generation in Mexico and uh, Latin America uh, region generally and how it can be made uh, you know, more uh, sustainable and uh, secure? Well, actually, the energy mix is like really diverse, uh, especially here in Mexico. Um, we're a country that uh, that has petroleum, so we we depend a lot on fossil fuels, but we also have hydroelectric, thermoelectric, combined cycle, um, carbon electric, nuclear, geothermic, wind, solar, biomass, and other kinds of energy. So, um, by having like this diversity in energy generation. I think that a way to make it more sustainable is to keeping this diversity, but letting our renewable resources be more than fossil resources. Um, we need these clean resources, but generating um, most of our energy currently in Mexico, 31% of the energy production is, um, is from renewable resources, but that's just a production because Mexico does not uh, produce what we consume. So we buy energy. So this uh, percentage of the, cons uh, the consumption we have is lower than the 31%. So uh, in a way to do this is by implementing this. Right now we're struggling with our government because they don't like, uh, the current administration doesn't like clean energy. Uh, they're going for petroleum and uh, combustolium. So that's like a big issue because we know like, like how that, uh, well, the, 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 uh, the, um, the gas effects it has, no? So uh, we need like to have this mix in, a, in order to make it more sustainable because as I said before, uh, we're not Northern getting to make it more sustainable and, uh, because, as I sometimes said before, we need them. Some people uh, we're not getting economically on this. And, uh, and sometimes uh, we need them. Some people depend economically on this, uh, on this resource. But we need to find a way to make like this mix between all of them and to letting other uh, companies, industries, private, uh, the private sector uh, in production and everything to be able to produce this kind of energy so we can have this balance and we don't have more fossil fuels like we have right now. Their production is 69% fossil fuels and 31% um, renewables. So we need like to reach this, this uh, equilibrium where it's like basically the same for both sides or most for renewable resources, I think that would be like perfect. But we need to be, um, uh, we need to get real. Like we need to think on, on, on the real panorama we're facing. So I think that would be it. I don't know if that answers your question. Yes, that was a perfect. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> if I talk about my country, so here, um, uh, almost more than 60% uh, power generation is uh, relying on uh, thermal means of energy 
And recently, uh, in 2020, uh, the federal government Uh, inject 20% of renewables into the uh, national energy mix by 2025 and uh, to increase uh, this uh, renewable injection uh, to 30% by uh, 2030. So uh, these are policies and uh, uh, nice policies, but needs, you know, a proper implementation and planning for these to, uh, to, to inject renewables uh, into the energy mix and to create a, a type of balance uh, in the energy mix. And uh, of course, there is a need for the uh, public and private uh, partnerships to, uh, to, to make these things happen. And also, uh, it is important to include the young people in the uh, national energy and climate policies, which is something uh, you know, missing. And uh, there is a, a, a serious need uh, to, uh, to include the insights of the fresh minds uh, at what actually they are thinking about the future of energy and uh, climate in their countries and uh, regions. So my next uh, question also uh, uh, comes around this, uh, that uh, uh, in your opinion, what uh, role young people can play in the uh, sustainable energy transition? The sustainable energy transition is basically the, to eradicate uh, poverty globally by energy means and those means which are sustainable in nature. So how do you think uh, that young people can uh, play their uh, role in the sustainable energy transition? Well, first, and I think you said something that's very important, that uh, young people have a different insight and people that are already the leaders in the energy sector. It's really important to uh, young people be taking in the decision making in these policies and the energy sector, because right now the energy sector is mostly led by older generations. Um, in some cases, some of these generations are not aware or do not really care about a climate change crisis we're facing and that uh, young generations are going to be the ones that we will have, we will have to, to live with the effects of climate change. We're all right now facing them and they're going to be worse in the future. So it's important to have a mix of generations, uh, have um, the experience older generations have and the, the new ideas that young people have to be part of the solution to climate change. At the end of the day, young generations, as I said, are going to be the ones who will need to make this change happen. Uh, our generation is right now trying to do it and the generations that are coming next are going to have to work harder than us for this. So um, uh, for people to be involved in the sustainable energy transition, young people, um, I think that they play a key role as I just said, uh, we need to let people, young people, sorry, to get involved in this transition because of the new innovations, the new insights, the new technologies, the new ideas they have, and that all of them or most of them normally are already aware and responsible with the environment. An example would be um, here in Mexico, we hear a lot about about the fashion industry and fast fashion and everyone is against fast fashion and everything. So uh, when we are talking about that, uh, older generations do not really seem to know even what fast fashion is and the implications it has and, uh, and the, the bad things they do to people that work in this, in this industry. So uh, talking like in this part, you see now young people getting the new ideas of having um, textiles that are made with recycled materials. So they are already having this insight and this aware and responsibility with their environment when they're having their new idea. And this applies also in the energy sector. Uh, young people right now have new ideas for, for, uh, for industry processes, uh, for generation, for new technologies. But most of these ideas are taking, um, are taking in account the environment we live in, the taking care of the planet, being able to do and uh, new things, being able to develop as countries or as, as young people to be able to study and everything, but aware of the climate change crisis we're living right now. So this is a new way to see the world. like this responsibility with our planet, with our natural resources, with, every, with everything. And uh, the future generations is, well, to the future generations, this insight is going to be super and extremely important. And right now many industries are taking really serious the, 
the key role young people play in this because are the ones that have these new insights. And I think like, <laughs> like in all the sustainable energy transition, they're like the key. We are the key, we need to be there because we are the ones that are mostly aware of what's happening to our planet and are the ones that we want to change that we don't want to, to end up having uh, more crises than we are facing right now with uh, wildfires and everything. Yeah, I totally agree with you and uh, young people must have a voice uh, whenever their future is being determined anywhere. And young people are actually eager to partner on the energy transition. Um, in fact, uh, many are already implementing innovative solutions as uh, you already mentioned. Uh, uh, but when it comes uh, time to scale their ideas, youth often you know, encounter a number of barriers uh, that limit uh, and their uh, access to uh, emerging technologies in the sustainable energy transition and uh, recognizing young people uh, need to be valued as uh, equal partners in the energy transition. Uh, well, uh, Andrea, um, uh, uh, as uh, you studied the sustainable development engineering and uh, you are also uh, the member uh, board of directors at Student Energy, so I, I would like to ask about this, that uh, what was it that attracted you to study uh, the sustainable development engineering and uh, why you joined uh, Student Energy, if you uh, uh, tell us about this. Yeah, uh, well, this is a funny story because when I was choosing my major, I didn't start studying uh, sustainable development engineering. I went to a different university than the one I am right now and I was studying, studying physics. So I went to this field because I like astronomy, but being in there, I realized it was more, more like a hobby to me, not something I wanted to do with my life. So I was at this point uh, between when I was 18, 19 years old, that I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know what I wanted to study. And um, I went to my university to uh, a major that is called uh, phys industrial physics engineering. And being at this, I was taking a class that uh, the, its name was climate change and energy. And it was like the first uh, inside I had with the crisis we're living right now with climate change. So um, in Mexico, we don't hear a lot and it's uh, about climate change and about taking care of their environment. When I was little in junior high or, uh, or before, what I knew was that it was good to recycle, but I didn't know what for, I didn't know, because they don't explain us. That's not a culture we have here in Mexico and it's just getting started here. So when I get to this class and I see what actually the problem was with the world, I don't know if you have ever get like these chills and excitement about something that you just want to do. I got that. I figure out this is what I want to do with my life. I want to be able to, ch to solve this problem. And I was really scared because I didn't know a lot about the problems. I didn't know a lot about the issues. But I said, well, I'm going to take the risk. I'm going to see what it's about. And I changed to my major. I'm studying right now. I'm... Uh, on seventh semester of sustainable development engineering. And I need to say that it's like something that I, I don't know exactly what attracted me. I just knew that that's what I wanted to do. I got like this excitement about, about the career. I didn't even saw the, the classes that I was going to be taking. I was like, my, I, I got my eyes closed. I said, I'm going to be changing. Then I realized it has a lot of chemistry and I used to be bad at chemistry. Now I'm good at it. But I had like this, uh, like this changing that just got me there. I didn't even knew I was going to be um, a part of these movements. I didn't knew I was going to be having a big impact in the sector as I'm having right now. And um, about student energy, actually, um, in my university, there are a lot of student groups. So I heard about the chapter, Student Energy at Tecnológico de Monterrey. And I was like, well, I'm going to see what, what's about. So they told me that it was about energy, but I was uh, barely on my third semester of the career. So I didn't know a lot about energy. I didn't know if they were going to take me in. I did my... my interview and um, I got uh, the position of social uh, responsibility director. So being here is in a student's energy and it's something that has completely changed my life. I learned a lot about energy that I hadn't uh, learned yet in my career. 
And I got, I was able to contribute with people all around the world in different events. I got to be with you in some of them. And it's really exciting like to see what we are able to do as a global community, as all being thinking about humanity and the change we want for the world, now, not caring about the, the differences might, that might be between, between countries, between nations, but we are actually working to do this world a better world. And we're working for young people to be able to continue doing this thing. So uh, that's basically why, uh, why I joined Student Energy. Actually, I didn't knew exactly what, what I was going to be doing and I ended up loving it. Next year, I was the president of the chapter and well, today I'm on the board of directors and we'll still continue like trying to, to empower young people to, to be able to join this, this movement and for us to be able to achieve the, the, the changes we want and to be part of the solution. Of course, Student Energy also aims to uh, empower young people and to uh, create future energy leaders uh, from young people. And uh, yes, I remember the uh, international virtual conference that uh, we all yeah. were part of. That was an amazing experience uh, with Dr. Scott Tinker uh, from University of Texas. So uh, that was uh, an amazing experience and exposure. And uh, Student Energy. Uh, uh, connects uh, young people uh, throughout the world to, uh, to talk about energy and climate and to uh, introduce innovative uh, ways to uh, solve the energy uh, issues and energy access issues and all these things. And uh, also uh, I would like to congratulate you again on the appointment as member board of directors student energy and I'm really happy for you when I uh, saw the announcement on Student Energy website. So I was really excited that uh, Elimini Andrea is selected. So uh, uh, congratulations uh, again. Thank you. Yeah, I was, I was really excited too. I, I, I didn't knew I was going to be selected, but uh, it's really great being there. Yes, Andrea, now as you are working uh, 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 in the uh, Board of Directors of Student Energy, also you are working as a young uh, activist for energy and environment. So uh, at the end, uh, I would uh, like to ask you that, uh, what is your message for young people uh, regarding the Global Youth Energy Outlook, which is a flagship project of uh, Student Energy and the first of its kind, and uh, you, you, you will be knowing about it. So what uh, is your message for young people regarding the uh, global youth energy outlook? Well, first of all, I would like to congratulate everyone working in the global youth energy outlook because the job you're doing is a very important job. Um, getting the voice of youth to be heard by the world leaders is such a challenging job. I believe it's been difficult for you guys. And I, I am really impressed with what it is. So I, I would say to never give up and to actually believe and trust that what you're doing is really important for the climate crisis we're having. And it's really important for uh, current young generations and future young generations to be able to, to be heard in these decision makings we're having and by the world leaders. We were talking before about, about this, about how the inclusion of young people in energy and climate change policies is important. And, and this is why, and what you guys are doing is extremely important, it's extremely uh, challenging, that, but it's something that it's going to be working, I believe, I hope, um, like um, in Spanish we say parteaguas, I, I don't know, uh, but it's like, like when you have a division between, between two different things. Like uh, we are used to have something some way and you're going to be like the ones who are going to let that be changed and this regarding young people being being heard. I, I already say this like too many times, but but I really insist this is what's really important about the young, uh, the global youth energy outlook and we'll just never give up and continue doing what you guys have been doing because it's very amazing and it's such an important job. Yes, of course, and uh, it's a big opportunity for young people to uh, influence the energy and climate policies of their countries and regions and to make their voices to uh, be heard by the uh, world leaders uh, and uh, their governments, uh, their countries. So uh, uh, young people uh, need to visit the Student Energy website, studentenergy.org slash outlook. And uh, uh, this, uh, they can participate in two ways. They can uh, uh, fill up our questionnaire, which is 
uh, five to three minutes questionnaire, and they they, they also uh, have the chance to include themselves for uh, great prizes at the end of the questionnaire, which includes uh, free tickets and bursaries to the upcoming Student Energy Summit. Also, cash prizes are there for the young people, and uh, free uh, one-year subscription to the master class, and many other prizes. But the big thing is that uh, it is uh, an opportunity for young people to uh, influence the energy and climate policies. Also, uh, uh, they have the opportunity to get registered themselves uh, for uh, a regional dialogue where each regional coordinator will be moderating three to five regional dialogues. And uh, I'll be moderating uh, one in uh, April soon and two in May. So uh, young people uh, ha has the opportunity to uh, either uh, fill the questionnaire and uh, to um, participate in uh, any one of our regional dialogue. And this is for all young people globally, uh, not specific to a country or region. It is uh, on a global level and uh, young people watching us uh, uh, every, anywhere in the world, uh, they have the opportunity to participate in this uh, first efforts can initiate to end. We are set to launch the final report in the upcoming United Nations COP26. Uh, so this was about the outlook. And uh, 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 now uh, we, we have the time up, so we need to wrap up. Uh, uh, well, uh, thank you so much, Andrea, once again for your wonderful uh, responses and uh, this great discussion. And uh, thank you uh, 